Treasury Star Parade. Produced under the personal direction of William A. Bacher with David Brookman and his orchestra and starring Philip Merivelle, Conrad Veidt, Patrick McGeehan, Harry Lang, and Gail Gordon in Violet Atkins' dynamic radio drama, Return to Berchtesgaden. Our scene, the darkness of an enormous projection room, lit only by the long spray of light which illuminates the great screen. In this room sits a solitary figure, bent forward in an attitude of rigid intensity. He must be a very important man to have such a private showing. Let's walk around and see if we can recognize him. That pallid face, a small mustache, the unruly lock of hair falling over his forehead, and those eyes, wild, intent eyes that stare at the screen with a mad, fanatic gleam. What does Adolf Schickelgruber see there that interests him so? Suppose we turn and look at the screen. Burning buildings, corpses lying in the streets, people running madly from bombs that fall from diving planes, appalling destruction, faces crucified in terror. But there is no terror on the face of the watcher. There's no horror there, only a gloating, terrible satisfaction. Look at them, running like rats to cover. But they will not escape. No one will escape me. This will be a total war that will put my name down in history above that of any man. Countries conquered in a day, cities raised in an hour. That was Warsaw, and it was like that in Rotterdam, Coventry, Southampton. It would be like that. Where Where Who is it? Who is in this room? Hitler half rises from his chair, and his eyes are the slow beginnings of fear. His gaze searches the shadowy corners. He shivers a little as if he were cold. His hand covers the telephone on the table. Who spoke? Who? Who are you? God, but dump the spine. Why does nobody hear me? Why does nobody come? Nobody will hear your screaming, Chancellor Hitler. Do you remember me? Look closer. They called me Chancellor too. The little Chancellor of Austria. Dolphus. I am not afraid of ghosts. But you still ring for your soldiers. Yes, I am a ghost. But I am real inside your brain, Adolf Hitler. With all the other ghosts who will not let you sleep at night. Look to your screen. Hitler tries to rise, but he seems fixed to the chair. His eyes dart fearfully from the shadows back to the screen. But now there is no unholy joy in his eyes. They are hunted, desperate. He shrinks back. What is it he sees now? A face looming larger, a figure seeming to take light and life from the spray of light illuminating the screen, filling the screen, coming out of it straight at him. Who is it now? You do not recognize me, Adolf Hitler? Strange, for I was here at Berchtesgaden. But then, how should you know me now? I was not a broken old man when you sent for me. I was a strong man with pride in his bearing and no fear in his heart. Schuschnick. Schuschnick. Yes, Kurt von Schuschnick. The whole world is asking what has become of me. Why don't you tell them? Keep away from me. God! It's no use, Adolf Hitler. They will not come this time. Not as they came the other time I was at Berchtesgaden. Then they were at every door threatening me. You screamed like an hysterical woman that unless I put size inkwad into my cabinet, freed all Nazi prisoners, restored the rights of the Nazi party in Austria, you would march three divisions over your borders and not one country in the world would lift a finger to help us. And you believed me? Because I believed you, my Austria is finished. Done to death in one short afternoon. There was no bloodshed. That was another bloodless victory. A bloodless victory. Yes, Adolf Hitler. Not one Nazi died. But 300,000 Austrians were destroyed when your armies marched in. Cart loads of innocent men and women went to concentration camps in Germany men and women who loved the breath and songs of Vienna. 
you would not know their loss or their hunger. And mine, Adolf Hitler, the hunger for the music and culture and grace of Austria that you kill. There is only one culture, that is the Third Reich. The culture of murder and terrorism. Dolphus was in your way. You murdered him. I was in your way. You destroyed me. Why have you returned to British Garden? For freedom! Give Austria her freedom and tell the world the truth, Adolf Hitler. What truth? Truth is a weapon of sand and water. There is no strength in it. To tell a lie often enough will make men believe it is the truth. God, Schwein! Tell them the truth, Adolf Why Hitler. Don't they come? Tell the world what you did to me after your army marched into Vienna. Tell them where I am. You are dead! 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 Hitler sits huddled in the room, still echoing with his voice. Fearfully, his eyes stay fastened to the great screen, silently unrolling the dreadful history of his march across Europe. Now it is Barcelona, Madrid, Belgium, Rotterdam, Patras, Athens, town after town, city after city going up in flames. And now it is London on which the bombs are falling. My London. There were tulips in the court of Buckingham Palace, sheep grazing in park enclosures, peaceful people in Hyde Park feeding the pigeons. No more. No more. Chamberlain? Yes. Neville Chamberlain. Still carrying your umbrella? Now I carry a cross. It was begun at Munich, Adolf Hitler, and finished when the bombs began to fall on London. I forged it when I believed your promises. You were a fool. I knew that. Too late. You ghosts cannot frighten me. Why have you come back to British Garden? On another peace mission? No. I came here once for peace. Peace in my time, remember? That was when I lived, before you shamed me to the world. Honor is what I ask for now, Adolf Hitler. My name is a mockery amongst men. Do you remember that I came back to England from Berchtesgaden, from Munich, shouting, Hitler promises peace in our time? Tell the world how you lied to me. I did not lie. Get out! 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 You cannot keep me out, Adolf Hitler. Do you remember me? Niemöller. Pastor Niemöller. Yes. Pastor Niemöller. You never sent for me to come to Berchtesgaden. But I was here in God's image. Do not mention God's name here. God said... You shall put no other gods before me. But you threw away the Ten Commandments and created a Nazi lie. You chose the swastika and rejected the cross. Did you think your sign could erase gods? I will erase it from the earth. I will hound that god lie to every corner of the earth. I will burn every Bible and put away all preachers as I have put you away until I wipe out religion and all its evil. The words of the Bible are burned into men's souls, Adolf Hitler. Religion is more than the words between the covers of a book. A man may rot a dozen years in the hell holes of Dachau and Buchenwald, but he will not have lost his God. In each of us is God, and you cannot drive him out with a scourge of whip. You can strangle the voice, cripple the fine mind, but the belief in God rises in man and defeats the conqueror. That is the miracle of faith God has given to man. Miracles. I create my own miracles. I have conquered countries in a day. The Czechs, the Poles, the Dutch, the Norwegians, the Danes, the Belgians. I shall take the English and the Russians. And when I have done all that, I shall take the Americans. This universe belongs to the German people, and I will be its leader. Be still. Do you know what you have done to the German people, Adolf Hitler? You have made them the butt of cynicism, 
the plague and sickness of mankind. You have murdered the soul of your own people. I have given the German people my name. That is their fate. It is stronger than God. Hear how it sounds. Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! Hear it, Adolf Hitler. Only an echo. And it will grow fainter as time goes on until men hear it no more. Look back to the screen of your bloody past. Do you remember this man? He was your loyal subject. He died for you. Captain Langstorff. I did not go down with the Graf Spee as you led the world to believe Adolf Hitler. I ended my life in a lonely hotel room in Buenos Aires. On your orders, I had to pay for that defeat. It is a lie. And this man, he is a king who fought you gallantly. I yielded my beloved Belgium and my army to spare them further slaughter. You promised an amnesty, but Belgium is a shambles and I am locked in a prison without even the comfort of my children. It, it is not the truth. And this woman, she is a queen who believed your pledges of neutrality. I believed you promised that you would never attack the Netherlands. Now my country is in ruins, my people starving. Hungry, hungry, no, no, get hungry. out, get out! No, you cannot drive them out, Adolf Hitler. They are the bloody record of your past. Shall I hold up to you the mirror of your future? No, no. Or are you afraid that you will see therein no reflection of yourself? No. For God has decreed that the devil shall cast no shadow, nor reflect any image. There is no devil, and there is no God. I say there is no God. His name is here, even in Berster's garden, Adolf Hitler. It will not crumble even after you are dead, and these walls rot. His name will be a torch for all the oppressed of the world. Soldiers! Suffer not, O oh my Lord, that injustice triumph on earth. Permit not the unleashed hordes of the Antichrist to corrupt nations, lay waste countries, Dishonor women, destroy children. Suffer not violence to conquer so that men will be forced to put their faith in violence instead of love. Suffer not, O oh Lord, that the lie be stronger than the truth. Though earth is not heaven, it cannot be thy will that it be hell. It cannot be thy will that all those who bear thy name shall be destroyed. For thou art not only the kingdom and the glory, but the power. Amen. And they have said it all for us. There's only one thing left to say. We in America have our task clearly before us. We shall not fail. We will work and fight and save until the evil that would corrupt this world is eliminated. Each and every one of us will do what he knows he has to do. And remember, invest at least 10% of your earnings, your total income, in United States war savings bonds and stamps. That is your quota. Every dollar you invest in war savings bonds and stamps, you are investing in the future security of America. This is your country. Keep it yours. Keep it yours.